So David, I hear that the HTTP version three is starting to roll out and you had some thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jim. So uh, yeah, just that. So HTTP three um, is uh, going to be rolled out. It just got standardized or published uh, Monday, uh, you know, June 6th, this past Monday. So before it was looked at as, you know, the new uh, protocol coming for HTTP and there wasn't necessarily a lot of thought or uh, work or, or work being put on it because again, it hadn't been uh, ratified or published yet as an RFC. However, as I just said, um, as of Monday, it is definitely now published as RFC 9114. Um, so one of the key things of this new uh, HTTP3 uh, protocol is the fact that it's going to use a uh, new what they call QUIC or QIC transport protocol. So what's unique about that is um, QUIC or QIC was developed by Google. And the key part or uniqueness what I'm alluding to is the fact that it's going to now be using UDP as the transport protocol. Whereas before in all years past, we've been using HTTP over TCP. This new HTTP3 version is going to be uh, using UDP. So the QUIC stands again for Quick UDP Internet Connections. So that's almost or is a big shift going from a, um, HTTP over TCP to now going over UDP. So um, it's going to, as we know today, HTTP2 is basically the primary protocol that's used. But this is going to use still some of the HTTP2 uh, features. However, this new quick protocol that is going to be going over uh, UDP is the uh, new features that are added. And ones that, <laughs> as I just mentioned, because now we're going over UDP, um, are going to bring up a lot of questions and are going to probably require and will require many changes in the future just because of the nature of things being uh, routed or sent over UDP now instead of TCP. Um, so what it's designed to do is in some of the features or uh, within it uh, is to address performance issues is in HTTP2 and make the connection faster. Um, it's basically going to try to decrease packet loss by eliminating what they call head of line blocking. So it's no longer going to block uh, all streams of information or data when one packet does not arrive. So that's going to... What they're trying to do and what it looks like it's going to be done is uh, eliminate the head of line blocking or HOL. Uh, some of the other things are it's going to speed up handshaking. So it's going to be doing that all in one connection instead of multiple uh, connections. It's going to enable encryption by default. So instead of encryption being required at the application layer, it's now going to be required at the actual transport layer. Um, and so that's kind of a, a new thing apart, uh, about this as well. The kind of one of the final points is kind of going back to what I mentioned about the performance issues. So when it's kind of tailored or going to be designed to address more mobile heavy or mobile internet usage where people constantly switch from, uh, you know, one network to the other. So basically going from maybe their home network, um, Wi-Fi off to the cellular, cellular network. As of now, um, there is some browser support for it. So uh, I know some of the later versions of Chrome, Firefox, and Edge have support. Uh, Safari does provide support for it, but it uh, must be enabled from the um, experimental features tab um, in your in the developer's menu. So again, we are seeing or it is being seen that some um, browsers do support it and it's kind of being used in some of the test phases. Um, but again, it's not necessarily widely spread just yet or widely used again, because as we just said, and no, it's kind of the new standard that just got uh, published. Some of the benefits um, of this HTTP3 protocol is that, again, as I mentioned, it's going to uh, give faster connections. So what it's going to do is basically the TLS version negotiation is going to be performed at the same time as your transport handshake. So instead of today, like we have, there's two where we have a TLS handshake or negotiation and the cryptographic or the transport handshakes, both of those are going to be combined into one, which is what they're hoping to improve uh, the connection time or speed up connection time. One of the other benefits are the packet numbers and the header information is going to be encrypted. So it's not going to probably be or be hard, much harder to be seen or by an attacker or an eavesdropper. However, um, as I'll talk about later in the concerns, um, that it may be an issue for, well, it will be for our security researchers and analysts. And the fact that since that day is being encrypted, it's going to be harder to see some of that header level information. Um, on top of that, with the benefit that is going to be addressed is that's going to should lower some of the you know man and mill attacks, maybe your IP spoofing and then some denial of service. However, there still is room for denial of service because of the fact that um, with the new protocol, there'll be much more heavier um, 
communication going back and forth now on the UDP. Um, so there's a twofold there, which is still kind of in the works. And because it's the new protocol or the new standard that just came out of, is it truly going to help with denial of service or is it going to add additional denial of service risks? One of the other ones basically is going to <clears throat> uh, support a, a zero round trip which is actually part of TLS 1.3, which again kind of skips handshake requirements in trusted settings. So that's good in a trusted setting, but one of the concerns there is going to be that it could lead to replay attacks without adequate uh, um, protection uh, to uh, identify that or uh, prevent it or eliminate it. And then kind of, as I mentioned, because the header information's um, encrypted, uh, you'll have a little more, a better bit, better protection on the sensitive data that's sent because it, instead of it now being today sent in plain text, you'll have that encryption. Um, so it will help there with the enhancement of privacy and in, uh, you know uh, sensitive data being sent across. And then as I kind of mentioned, one of the other benefits is going to combine the handshakes into one TCP and TLS. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> the final is um, on the round trip between client server, the request between client server, they're going to um, be completed as one as well instead of two uh, that it normally takes today for TCP and both TLS. So again, there are some good benefits to it. Um, it does look promising, but um, as we know, just by the term UDP alone, um, we're going to have to look into some of a lot of different uh, areas as of today where um, things kind of drop UDP packets or firewalls block them just because of the nature of UDP. Well, now that it's going to become the new protocol, uh, there's going to be a lot more discussion. We're going to have to do a lot more uh, work to uh, handle this being now center UDP instead of TCP. Yeah, from the you know from the security guy perspective, I mean that's that's what I've been doing for longer than I want to think about. <laughs> yeah, the, some of the issues that this introduces, you know. Um, because the encryption is end to end as part of the, and it's part of the UDP packet, you know, what is this going to do for corporate proxies? You know, because, you know, a lot of corporations use web proxy servers to try to, you know, limit exfiltration of sensitive data. Well, now all of that is encrypted end to end. So the proxy probably can't see inside it because it, you know, quick is one of the things about quick is it's supposed to eliminate man in the middle. Well, the proxy is a man in the middle, you know, and and firewalls, you know, we've we often limit or especially rate limit UDP because it's used so much in denial of service attacks. Now this legitimate UDP traffic. How are we going to be able to tell, you know, the legitimate from the illegitimate again because it's encrypted from end to end, you know, at the <clears throat> at a lower level in the protocol stack. So, yeah, you know, I've been watching the development of Quick and HTTP three from a distance for a while, <clears throat> and I I think it is going to introduce uh, some new issues for us. You know, just monitoring network traffic and things like proxies. I understand why it was why it was created, but you know, it may make our lives a little bit more difficult. You know that, and that's true, right? And you know, just like you said, it's that the fact that with firewalls, proxies, and you know, that is definitely the concerns. And you know, even a lot of you know ISPs or just normal, like you say, UDP traffic's just blocked today. You know, not all, but a lot of it is just because of the fact that it's UDP. So now there will be definitely have to be configuration changes, updates um, to allow that. And then, uh, you know, be able to somehow recognize, you know, now coming going forward, what is legitimate, what's not. And then just as you said, so, you know, firewalls are not going to be able, when it does eventually go widespread uh, use, won't be able to track connection setup or uh, header information because it is encrypted, as you said. So packet numbers, acknowledgments, ACKs, uh, your options, you know, et cetera, will be encrypted, which it will be tough to try to, you know, or you won't be able to see that unless there's some other way to look at these after this, you know, gets implemented. And the, and the other yeah. thing, too, is that load balancers also, you know, um, from a, you know, the whole overall network perspective, architecture perspective, right? So there are definitely in the security perspective. And then you get from a load balance perspective, uh, those will have to be adjusted to allow and understand how the connection IDs are handled 
across, you know, uh, connections from a low bouncer to a, a client. Yeah, and I was, I was stunned. I mean, I, I know that there have been some experiments with HTTP3, but I wasn't aware of a lot of web servers that actually supported it yet. So I was stunned in the portswigger.net post where Cloudflare estimates that already 25% of the traffic is HTTP3. That just floored me. I didn't think there were that many web servers that supported it for there to be that much HTTP3 traffic already. Right. Well, yeah, and I think on that too, because I think the, the, the TLS 1.3, right, with the HTTP version 3. So I know, I think on the Cloudflare, they were doing a lot of it with some of their, I guess, internal customers or clients or users. But yeah, I did notice that as well. They were saying, yeah, they had the, the where they charted that out or over a, a couple of weeks or months where they were looking at the traffic and it did show as a, so it is interesting that um, it was noted that that is a 25% increase or utilization rate of HTTP 3, um, you know, that they were seeing or have seen. Yeah. So I, I know that, you know, this protocol is HTTP 3 has been in development for quite some time, uh, several years now. Um, I was just surprised that there that there's that much experimental support for it already. Since, as you said, the RFC, uh, what was it, ninety one fourteen? Correct. Yep. Uh, was just just recently released. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 an interesting topic and something that we're going to need to keep our eyes on, you know, over the months and years to come. It's going to introduce some new, some new challenges, but yeah, it's that's that's part of life as a as a security guy. Um, <laughs> you know, there are always these new protocols, new. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I got started in the business, there yeah, you know, there wasn't all that much HTTP traffic even over the the networks. It was. You know, the predecessor of that, Gopher and, you know, and the clear text protocols, Telnet and FTP and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's always, always interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, you know, like you say, so yeah, with it be coming out, I mean, you know, there are vendors again, you know, that are looking at, have been working on it, but maybe not as, you know, as a, a quicker pace per se, right? Because of the fact, as you said, right, it's just so new and we've, Basically, you know, I know two, HTTP2 came out, what, 2015, I think, or kind of was implemented then. So, uh, but still, you know, we're still seeing, as we talked about, you know, in other discussions, you know, we still see some traffic as 1.1, even though that's not obviously as heavy as the, the primary one, two. It's just interesting that now three's coming out, was standardized. And even though people are working at it or looking at it and, and developing and starting to test with it, um, today was more just, you know, bring out and, and make aware that, yeah, it definitely has been standardized and published. So uh, with the move to UDP, it's definitely, as you say as well, something that's going to cause a big shift because of the fact that everything before was over TCP or HTTP, that is. Yep. Well, thanks for bringing this to our attention. It's yep. been, it's going to continue to be really interesting. <laughs> sure, sure is. Yeah.